Okay, more importantly than where do you exist in that paradigm, let's talk about angels. Okay, so there's angels. What are angels? Are angels, are angels uh, space aliens? Because, okay, if somebody today had an experience where an angel appeared, we'd say, oh, you had a UFO experience, you've, you've seen an alien. <clears throat> but, you know, you tack on a few thousand years and it's, oh, it's an angel. When the uh, word for angel in Hebrew, then you, you know, written down in Greek or whatever, was uh, messenger. Malak, I believe, if my Hebrew is up to snuff, I don't remember, honestly, but uh, messenger. Okay, so messenger. Messenger of... Elohim, Yahuwah, messenger of God, messenger of the Lord. So the Lord has a lot of messengers, and coincidentally, nobody ever saw him face to face, which is sort of like what it is nowadays with Christian pastors being like, oh, baby Jesus this, baby Jesus that, where is this baby Jesus? Oh, he's not around. He, he's here, but he's there, he's everywhere. But listen to me. So, you know, these pastors are messengers of, or angels of uh, their particular gods. And uh, that's, that's really great. Uh, when you're talking about a thing that we all know and can sort of look around and see, okay, this has some sort of intelligent design, uh, we all agree, and uh, how can we make money off of this? So, <laughs> what am I getting at? If you've decided to give all your power away to a religious paradigm, all I'm saying to you is listen, listen to your heart, side of the truth, and think why am I giving all my power away to this God, this being? Would this being want me to give all my power away to, to this being indefinitely? And outside of all that, if you've decided to give all your power away over to a celebrity, an actor, and all your energy and soul, and all the thoughts that you could all have occupied, oh, I'm nothing without my God, or I'm nothing without this, I have to do all these things in my life and just be this constant slave to Allah or whatever, where are you? Is your whole life purpose to be a battery for this God? To be a generator of worship and praise and adulation for this God? Is that your life purpose? Good for that being if it is, but, but what about you? So, if you're infinite, maybe you'll come back again and have to redo this whole thing over. Some people uh, need to experience really negative things in life. And they want they find themselves in negative situations. They find themselves experience like severe depression. Other people want, are like, oh, everything's fine. It's all love and light. And guess what? They're both right and they're both wrong at the same time because this world is divided. Hey, I don't know if you noticed this, but I have both sides. I have two sides. We're in duality. This world is spinning, right? And because of that spinning, there's north and a south, so things have separated the two, like chromosomes when they're, you know, DNA and atoms and all that are spinning around each other. North, south, negative, positive. My left side and my left side and my right side and my right eyeball and left eyeball. Left brain, right brain, right lung, blah, blah, blah. I had a, I had a dream a little while ago that I was holding my heart in my hands. I just remember that right now. Blech. What a weird dream. But, listen to this. We're in duality. We're in this negative and positive. This is where we are. Who can deny that? That we're in duality. We're in light and darkness. We're, we're, we're in this, we're existing in this construct of light and darkness, ne negative, positive. And maybe you could have done it better in your, your, univer your universe, if George Kavasilis is right, maybe you've done it better. But you're here right now. Your point of attention, as David Icke would say, is right here now, experiencing this life as whatever your name is. And here we are, okay? Now, whether it's right or wrong or bad or right, we are here. We have the choice as a soul to go left or right, to say everything's negative. This world is crap. Look at all the wars. Look at everything. There's people starving in Africa. And look at the corruption of the U.S. government. And look at uh, orchestrated 9-11s. And look at, all, look at all this negativity stuff that's going on. And look at how crappy the world is. And nobody cares. And people are so vapid. And nobody knows my pain. Life is so negative, And nobody understands me. And everything is horrible. And... I mean, I even, and you're right, and I even uh, experience things that, that seem, you know, negative and experience all this, like, negative crap in my life uh, a lot. <laughs> I mean, let me uh, show you a video I just took earlier. This is of uh, chemtrails. 
uh, chemtrail haze today. And uh, that's really irritating to me. Check this out. Some real nasty chemtrail haze out today. The jets are flying really high, so it's hard to see them, but they're leaving these you know, straight lines as you can see right here. And this monstrosity, see that? And then there's a few lines, straight lines over there. Successfully blocking out the sun to a certain extent, dumping all this garbage on us thanks to evergreen air, blocking out the sun for our own protection. Huh. Yeah, easy to say, but what's in there? Cooling the earth, not realizing that we're all breathing this stuff in, pooping in the pool, pooping in the pool and saying that it's good for you. If we were in a fish tank, this would be like dropping uh, black dye in it to the point where the water's not clear anymore and then saying well, that's the way the water's supposed to be. It's supposed to be black water. Just suck it up and breathe it in fish. Even though it's full of chemicals and aluminum and barium, it's good for you. People look at that and think oh that's what clouds are supposed to look like. That's what clouds are supposed to look like. So that, and then on the other side of duality, you have this, oh, everything is love and light, and everything's happy all the time, and peace and love and harmony, and God is light, and blah, blah, blah. And you can be on either side of that duality. And who's to say that, you know, the thing is that they're both right. The world can be a ridiculously horrible place and the world can be an amazing wonderland all at the same time. There's there's beautiful, you know, things that happen, miracles, people, kids being born and first words and first steps and lions and zebras and giraffes and there's also horrible murder in the name of religion, there's genocides, orchestrated false flag events and rape and pillaging and all that sort of horrible stuff over there and it's all in this same earth we are in a plane of existence where we are allowed to experience both sides of duality and you can plunge yourself into either side in this life or the next as much as you need to until you come to the place where you've decided to live without envy hate or greed and to mature your soul to love people and rise above all the both sides and both extremes of the coin transmute it all and become your own individual version of awesome. I think that a lot of people do get caught up in the paradigm of religion, maybe multiple lives over, I don't know. If you're thinking, listening to me and thinking, who is this guy talking about multiple lives or whatever, that's crazy talk. Alright, that's crazy talk. Well, if you're a Christian saying that, how many times did the uh, Messiah incarnate? Well, that's different, Adam, because he's the Messiah. Okay. He said that you would do greater things than him. So the Messiah was before Abraham, right? He created the world according to John uh, chapter 1. Um, he is at the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. After he died and rose again in the Gospels, he appeared to people uh, and spoke to them about everything that happened, explained the Gospel to them from the Torah. So he died and rose again. He had multiple incarnations. He appeared to different people. So the Messiah had multiple incarnations, so not just one life. You'd say, well, he, he's different. Okay, well, Lazarus had mul multiple lives. He had two lives. Uh, uh, yeah. John the Baptist was Elijah, come back, the spirit of Elijah. So maybe the spirit of Elijah had multiple incarnations. Not only that, but we're, we're all going to be there at the great white throne judgment and we're all going to be there in the end when we rise again from the dead to be judged. So, oh, how many incarnations do you have? People, Christians like to look down on Hindus because they think, oh, multiple gods and reincarnation, that's poppycock. They don't even understand their own scriptures talk about reincarnation and talk about multiple gods. 
the Bible doesn't talk about multiple gods. What do you think the second commandment was all about? It was all about idolatry. The children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, while Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, lost their marbles. They didn't know what the hell was going on. This Moses guy is going on about this God that brought us out of Egypt. And uh, what the hell? Where did he go? Aaron, Moses' brother, make us a golden calf that we can just pray like we used to pray to the gods of Egypt and get the hell out of here. This sucks. Moses comes down from after having this like intimate face time with the God of the Bible, apparently. So he comes down and he's like, Oh, I got ten commandments. This is awesome. Life is good. He comes down and sees... The children of Israel have made a golden calf out of all their gold. They literally carved one of their old gods of after the constellation Taurus or this bull type god. And I uh, started worshipping and saying this is the god that brought us out of Egypt and blah blah blah. And Moses lost his marbles. He broke the Ten Commandments, went back up, did the whole thing again. And apparently the god of the Bible, this Jehovah, Yahweh guy that you're talking about that always oh, the god of the Bible and loves everybody, was like, let me kill them. Let me kill them, Moses. Let me destroy them all right now. I'll make a great nation of you. Screw all these people. They don't even like me. Look at this psychopathic God. Who? Okay, we read these stories, and you probably read, you're, 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 you might be hearing me, and your brain might be just going nuts right now, being like, oh, what is he saying? Is he saying that the God of the Bible isn't the, a God of love? Well, I don't know. You tell me. What is that? Read that story. Go back and read it for yourself. It's in Genesis. Go back and read it for yourself, and then you tell me what you think about that. A God loving this loving, merciful God that wants to just kill Israel. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you. That's what it says. Side with the truth of whatever it is. So, was Moses confused? Even bringing that up in front of a Jewish person would get you a slap in the face. Was Moses talking about a God that he didn't fully understand? He said he met him face to face, so maybe he met an angel. Maybe he met the devil. Maybe he met one of the myriads of angels. If, he, if Moses says he saw God, did he see God? If I say I know exactly everything about this symbol, am I right? I'm just saying, side with whatever the truth is. Clearly, this entity whether it was us from the future, or an alien, or whatever. This entity God uh, had a lot of influence over Moses and over the children of Israel back in the day. But just keep in mind that this same God that Moses is talking about uh, wanted to kill all of Israel. And if you consider the flood story, then uh, not only did he want to, but he did regret and murder, mass murder people. And, uh, you know, the Christians nowadays who love going to war and killing brown people in the name of religion or whatever, read those stories and they're like, hell yeah, God loves El, you know, baby Jesus and going off and turban head and kill the Iraqis and Pakistanis because God bless America. So, anyway, we live in this crazy world of duality where, you know, you can call God the devil and God calls the devil the devil and the devil calls God the devil and everybody's fighting with each other and there's all these beings of angels and all these beings and conglomerate beings and monopoly beings that have spent longer than you have been on this earth uh, working on how to suck your soul's energy and how to trick you into one paradigm or the other. So here I am, 30 years in this body, and uh, I'm just trying to say side with whatever the truth is. And I've been wrong a lot but uh, in the past, and I'm trying to learn and progress and mature my soul. Um, if you want to talk about life after death, you know, I've, I've been to a lot of funerals, and, uh, you know, there comes a point where your body gives out, where you die, okay? So... Um, people are afraid of death, people are afraid of hell, people, one of the big reasons that people believe in, give so much attention to religion is because they're afraid of the afterlife, they're afraid of hell. But I can tell you, in my own experience, every time I've been on my deathbed, it's been awesome. Awesome. People have been there and what they would see, what the outside observer would see, would be this... Well, what's going on in here was, ah, oh my god, this is awesome, oh, this is wicked, oh, 
But then what, what you see is... Well, that's, that was my experience. I was on my death, like last time that I almost died, uh, my kidneys were failing. And the doctor Jewish came in and was like, hey, Adam, you could have died one more night uh, of not coming to the hospital and you would have been dead and died in your sleep. Not that I um, wanted to die. I think I made the decision on my deathbed that last time that, you know, I want to live. I want to live. And uh, I could have died, but the experience I was having was a lot different than the experience that those around me were having. having. So it sucks when people die because, you're, you know, they're losing somebody. But for the person who is dying, it's usually one of the most coolest things that's ever, ever happened. Now, to expand your mind a little bit, I would, in, I would uh, recommend to go online and look up this phenomenon of indigo children or past life remembering. There's all these uh, documented examples, especially in uh, David Wilcox, the source field investigations which uh, there's kids that have detailed memories of previous lives. I can think of one example where this kid is talking about this, you know, I can remember all my crew and I died in a plane crash and blah blah blah. I was here and then they take the kid and they go there and everything that he had no way of knowing checks out. He described, there's kids that have described cities that they never lived in in this life and there's people that have described crews that they've worked with and you read the obituaries or the roster of the crew that they're with in the army and it's like, hey, he's, how does he know this? Some people would say, well, in a, in, a, in a really radical weird situation or an extreme situation, you might have unfinished business. You might, your soul might be so occupied with having to do a few more things that you would reincarnate into somebody else's body. So how many stars are there when you look into the sky? There's a lot, right? So how many souls could there possibly be? Probably a lot. All these individual stars and planets are beings, you know, the, the Earth that we're on is a being. It's, they call it Mother Earth, you know, we're on a being, we're a being, in a being, on a being, being a being. There's a lot of beings around here. And what I wanted to say earlier, and this is sort of wrap up my thing about you are awesome, is that like, okay, I consider myself Adam Josh, I am Adam, right? Okay, but like, I have a left hand and a right hand and there's individual cells and microbial things and blood and all these complicated mysterious manly parts that I don't even understand going on in this body as I speak. I have gut flora, bacteria and a whole bunch of individual beings that should I happen to die they would mercilessly consume this flesh inside and out. Don't think any different. If you drop dead and, and uh, right now, God forbid, and uh, you, you know you start decaying guess what's happening all that bacteria is literally eating you from the inside out so don't think that they're just standing there oh yeah we love you Adam we can't wait you know you know, just say hey, you're the best they're, they can't wait until you croak so they can mercilessly consume you and then I guess ultimately their fate would be to die as well so we are a host of all these different cells and organisms and you are a collected effort. I, I don't mean you, but I mean like the body that you're in is a collective effort. I mean of your mom and your dad and their parents and all these things that got you into the point where you were through your genes and your DNA and blah blah blah. And then on top of all that you have a body which has all these individual cells made up of the same stuff that the universe is. So in any proper definition of the universe you have to include yourself, which is something that I've talked about before, but like people say the universe is out there, blah, 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 blah. you are the universe, the universe is inside of you. If you were a million miles away describing the universe, you'd still have to describe Earth and include everything in Earth in the context of the universe. So when you describe the universe, you're actually describing yourself. So be the change that you want to see in the world. If you want to change things, change yourself because you are the universe. The universe is you. If you decide, I'm going to change something, well, guess what? The universe is changing because you're the universe. <laughs> you are awesome. And your body is a collected effort, as I was saying. Um, so I was mirroring in my analogy that I forgot to finish, mirroring as above so below. You look at a seed and you're like, oh poor seed, it's dying, poor caterpillar, it's dying. No, it's going through a state of change and then it's something completely different. A star that's about to go supernova is dying. No, it's just becoming something entirely different. So. The, the word death is sort of a word that we like to use, like uh, there's a finality. Well, okay, if you want to believe that there's a finality, I mean, everything is in a state of change. We are moving. We're on a planet that's moving through space in a solar system that's moving, around a sun that's moving, and everything is moving. We are on Spaceship Earth right now. 
So to say that there's a finish point and a start point, okay, maybe, I don't know. I wasn't there for either. Uh, I don't remember it, you know, if I was there. Our higher selves maybe have orchestrated this whole life for us and when we pray, we're actually praying to our higher self and we feel like, you know, there's this guiding force my entire life that's been giving me like goose pimples and blah, blah, blah. Maybe it was just your higher self, this more advanced version of you that's outside of time, that uh, doesn't have the time restrictions, uh, that can see, you know, your entire life, an advanced version of you, but you're here in this uh, like limited, first of all, a baby and then an adult and then you die, but there's this higher version of you that's always existed outside of the body that's sort of like guiding you and people pray to that and say, oh God, blah, blah, blah. And then your higher self is just like, why do you keep praying to me all the time? Maybe it would just be better to meditate, you know, instead of giving all your power away to this God entity, I don't know, but that's your business. We're all a collected effort, as I was saying. I keep getting sidetracked. Okay. Earth is in a solar system, and everybody in this solar system has agreed to be, okay, you're going to be Mars, I'm going to be Earth, you're going to be there, I'm going to be here, the moon's going to be there, however the moon got there is another topic, the sun's going to be there, and that's our solar system. But there's lots of solar systems, and there's lots of galaxies. So, Earth could stand there and say, I'm an individual being, I'm awesome, yeah, I'm awesome, me and nobody else, but Earth is a consortium, it's a big concerted effort uh, of seven billion people, all sorts of different flora and fauna, zebras, giraffes, uh, guitars, and all sorts of different things, right? Just like you are a whole bunch of different beings and cells and all sorts of different crazy things that we don't even fully understand going on inside the body right now. But then you say, well, I'm just me. So there's an individual being of Earth, and then there's the concerted effort of Earth, and then there's outside of all that, as above, so below, keep in mind, there is this agreement that Earth has made with the solar system that, okay, you're going to be here, I'm going to revolve around the sun. So some people would say, well, the sun is all that matters. Well, we're living on Earth, so we sort of matter, right? But if the sun decided to go supernova tomorrow or belch off a solar flare in the wrong direction, we'd all be incinerated. So maybe the Earth, the sun is the only thing that matters. Maybe we should worship the sun. And hey, how did I go full circle from back to Egyptology again? Egyptology. Yes, the study of the Egyptology was more than about the sun, but I'm just saying. Lots of ancient people and people still today worship the sun. Because there's this inherent nature in all of us that looks at the sun and realizes, wait a minute, that gives us seasons, that helps plants grow. If it didn't exist, we wouldn't exist, that type of thing. So we need the sun. People have perverted that into whole weird religions. But the sun is its own being. And the earth is its own being. But at the same time, we've all made these agreements that, okay, you're going to be there, I'm going to be there. And George Cavasilis would say we're all role-playing for each other. So your mom is your mom and your dad is your dad. Uh, but you're still you. You know, you may work for this one guy and you may have agreed to be in this long-term relationship with this other person. But that doesn't mean that you're any less you at the end of the day. You're only living your own life. Your mother and your father and your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your father, your kids, your parents... None of these people are living your life. You are your own awesome. You are unique and solely you, just like a star is unique in a sea of stars. Yeah, there's a lot of stars and yeah, there's a lot of planets, but you are your own particular version of awesome. Even if you've made agreements to have this person over there or have this person in your life, you're your own particular version and your own particular brand of awesome. And I would encourage you just to realize that, to look up at the night sky and say, where did I get this idea that there's a start and an end? Where did I get this idea that I was born out of one singular God matrix? There's lots of gods. There's seven billion different ideas of God on planet Earth. So who's right and who's wrong? I would encourage you to side with the truth. If your higher self has been your God your entire life, just say, hey, maybe I've been praying to my, my higher self this entire life, this expanded version of me that's outside of time. If you want to think that you're born into some sort of weird God matrix and never actually... Uh, analyze it or ask yourself who is this being of God and why does this weird God being want to suck my soul and all my power and worship? If you never ask yourself that, maybe it's time to start asking yourself these types of questions. That is The Brog, episode 86. You are awesome. I feel like I've said everything that I wanted to say. And thank you for watching if you made it this far. And, uh, be sure to visit adamjosh.com. All the answers to all your questions are at adamjosh.com.
didn't they give you medication for this? 